In this week's project, I'm upgrading this vintage lamp with voice control using an Amazon Echo and ESP8266 microcontroller in the Adafruit Feather Huzzah flavor. To control the AC portion of the circuit, I'm hooking up a relay feather wing. I always build a breadboard prototype of these types of circuit first, even if the ultimate goal is to get everything to fit into the wooden base of the lamp. Alexa, turn the light on. Okay. Alexa, turn the light off. Okay. The Arduino code for this project uses the example sketch for the FOMO ESP library, which emulates a Belkin Wemo device. Consequently, configuring your homebrew is exactly the same as the commercial device, which is a breeze in the Alexa app. For natural speech's sake, I've named my device The Light. I'll put a link to my instructable for this project in the description, where you can find the circuit diagram and code for this project. After confirming that everything works, it's time to tackle the woodworking portion of this project. See, the lamp is held together by this threaded rod, which is easy to shorten, and then I'm just chiseling out the wood base to accommodate my components. Here I've got an example sketch using the FOMO ESP Arduino library, and I um, have this working with my Amazon Echo, as you saw, but I want to add in that auxiliary button so that you can still turn the lamp on and off with the switch on the lamp and then independently control it with voice commands. So I want to mash this up with some button code. I'm going to look through my samples here. What I want is not the standard button, but the state change detection example and that's uh, because it shows you how to create an action that happens only when the button state changes not just about what the button state is you guys are always asking me how to get better at coding and how to practically work with the code examples for mine and other projects and that's why i'm going to show you right now how i'm mashing up these two programs. Uh, basically, I'll look here at the example. It has some variables in it. Now, this sketch, it lights up the button every four times you press the button with this variable called button push counter. We don't need that. We just want it to do it every time. So we can um, omit this variable, but we'll take these two, button state and last button state, and we'll put those over with our um, variables here. And then uh, we also need a, a pin for the button. We already have, we're not going to use an LED. We're going to use the relay. So the, the button pin is actually four. And then we got to make sure that we're initializing the button pin as an input. And uh, that's going to happen in the setup function. Let's do that right here. And you know what? I happen to know that that one has an internal pull-up resistor, so I'm going to use it so I don't have to wire it on the breadboard. And then let's just copy everything but this button counter section. So it's gonna read the button pin and check to see if the pin is connected to high or low, power or ground, and then it's gonna say if the button state is not equal to the button state the last time around, then enter this if then statement, and then evaluate whether it's high or low and turn it on and off uh, before then setting that as the last button state and continuing around the loop. Uh, okay, so we'll copy all of that, and in this example, nothing really happens in the loop except to call that FOMO function, so we'll just paste all of this in here. Button state, digital read, button pin, okay, it's in here. We don't need to increment button push counter, but we do need to, uh, when the serial print on, we do need to turn the relay on. So we'll go up here to the code that does that, which is for the voice commands, digital write, relay pin high, copy it and put that in here. If button state equals high, then oops, then paste that. Except, hmm, that's not exactly what we want, is it? Because um, we're using the internal pull-up resistor, so we actually the button activity is reversed. So we want, um, if the button state is low, then turn the relay on, and then if it's not, uh, turn the relay off. And remember, this whole if statement is, uh, none of this stuff is going to happen unless the button state has changed from the last time through the loop. So if you haven't touched the button and you activated it with the voice commands, it's not going to undo that. They actually, they act kind of in parallel with one another. So over here, I have my lamp with the bottom all carved out and my hardware here. I've tidied up the AC connections a little bit with some heat shrink tubing. And um, instead of the power brick inside 
the bottom I have the USB plug plugged into the computer so I can update the code. And then I'm just gonna hit upload. Now we're ready to test and see if this switch works. Oh yeah, great. This is a click on, click off toggle switch. And that's why it has this hiccup at the beginning because the mechanism actually um, turns off and then back on again really quickly on its way into its latched position. And so now that this is working, I should go put it in the bedroom with the Amazon Echo and uh, test out its full functionality. Alexa, turn the light on. Okay. Alexa, turn the light on. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that project as much as I did and found something useful you could incorporate into your own connected devices. If you need a little bit more help getting started with the ESP8266, try my free Internet of Things class on instructables.com. I'll put a link to that and the tutorial for this project in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I put out new DIY videos every week and it would mean so much to me if you'd subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you next time. Alexa, turn the light off. Okay. Thanks. Alexa, turn the light on.